it's very interesting, guys. I think I am just seeing more confirmations that this polar vortex is more than they're just telling us. It's not just a polar vortex that is going to, you know, um, come and go and just, wow, that was really interesting. This is actually a change that's happened on our planet where the weather is now going to be significantly different and that is it's going to be colder. And when I was looking at this information on the Daily Mail, or sorry, Mail Online, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the sheeple fodder, okay? It's what they feed the herd. And um, this article that was published on the 9th of January, 2014, goes to say that, um, you know, there's been record-breaking chill across the US and Canada, and it's so frigid that it's literally stops Niagara Falls, okay? And they've taken photos of it. Now, they go on to then show you other photos, and I'll put this article underneath, and you can have a look yourself. But, when you come down the bottom here, they start showing you these other photos of the Niagara Falls frozen back then, and they're saying that this is thought to be 1911 um, or 1912, okay? And then they go on and they show you more. And they're saying that this one is supposed to be 1890 or 1902, but they're not really sure. Okay? And then we have this one here. Uh, they're saying is um, around 1936. Now, these ones up here kind of caught my attention, especially when I was looking at these dates here. Okay? And 1890 believed to be from 1890 okay now the reason I say that is because I was looking into some information about the little ice age now there are cycles within cycles okay it's not just all one same thing there are you know larger ice ages and then there are varying severity in these weather events that happen and it's all connected to our sun and there is information that you can research and again I'm not going to just spoon feed um, if you want to have a look at the correlation between ice ages and solar activity just put into Google correlation between ice ages and solar activity and that will bring you up a wealth of information from uh, papers, research papers to NASA's um, articles, their own articles, they admit that uh, you know it's all connected. Okay, they're not hiding the fact that they know the sun drives our climate, drives our weather. Okay, so I was looking at this uh, information about the Little Ice Age and again they're a little bit dodgy on the dates. They even admit they're not real sure when it starts and when it really finishes but it's around these times. Well interestingly they're saying that uh, there was this Little Ice Age uh, from about the 1350s to the 1850s. Now remember this was the 1890s, this um, one down here. Okay. So this is right when this was occurring. Now, this just means that um, these events are survivable, but the only difference we have now is that we are really dependent upon the energy grid, whereas back then they were more dependent upon themselves. They used to go hunting, they used to grow their own food, they used to be able to help each other. It wasn't just the machine in the 1930s. I mean, that really didn't start till about you know the 1950s after World War II that we started getting um, you know brainwashed um, and programmed to just consume information from Big Brother and, and do it unquestioningly and so they put us through school you know we had to go to school we had to get the program and so we are very much a different species than we were back then so I don't know if a prolonged event uh, it's really going to um, be well for the, um, you know, kind of people that are more vulnerable. Okay, so just be aware of that. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's an interesting connection. We've seen the connection here. So um, be aware of it and maybe consider that, factor that into your preparations, that it may be, um, you know, something that is ongoing and you may have to start, um, you know, planning for these events to continue on 
in a very severe way, especially cold and down here, probably heat and flooding. We're about to start our flooding season. We've got our cyclone season about to start. Um, and I'm in a cyclone prone area, so I'm pretty interested to see what the cyclone season is going to bring this year because the climate and the weather patterns have changed since the full magnetic reversal on the sun. And it is now affecting our planet differently because we're dealing with other energies that are coming in. We're dealing with the ether that they don't tell you about, okay? That Nikola Tesla knew all about it. All right, Einstein spoke about it a bit. Um, Walter Russell spoke about it. It's an element, okay? And it's coming back and it is basically um, changing the cycles of the sun. And because the sun is connected to our physicality on this planet, it is also connecting our planet and us because we are extensions of our planet. So it's all connected, you know, and I mean, I, I'm trying not to go too fast ahead of some people that are just starting to get, uh, you know, the understanding that things really are changing. And so to see the Niagara Falls now freezing and we've seen snow in Egypt, snow in Australia in summer, snow in Hawaii, snow in Thailand. I mean, that happened a couple of months ago and I saw a weather um, place try and cover that up. And this same weather place, Higgins Storm Chasing, tried to cover up the uh, lighthouse that was frozen by saying that it was last year's pictures. And then when you actually went and had a look for this year's pictures, they were worse. So you just be aware that some of these groups out there, they may be intentionally or not intentionally giving information that may not be correct or dismissing information in a way that they do not want to accept that things are changing. You know, I don't know the mentality behind people playing down these events, especially people in important positions that are putting out information to the general public. And, you know, it's no use just pretending that this may not be a severe event. Just because you are looking at this event as it could be a severe event doesn't mean you're fear-mongering, doesn't mean that, oh, it's doom. It just means, well, there are changes that we have to factor in on this planet unless you live in that little box of programming still that they put you in where everything they tell you is truth and reality and it's never going to change. Where in actual fact, we live in an ever-changing reality, an ever-changing universe, an ever-changing planet. The seasons change all the time and the bigger cycles bring in bigger seasons. This is what we've not understood because we've been the little frogs at the bottom of the pond. Time to come to the top of the pond, little frogs. There's much bigger cycles out there that we have to factor in. And this is also bringing in the ether as well. It's all in preparation for whatever's coming, this, uh, you know, end of cycle um, culmination and where we head towards this tipping point. So continue to expect to see this. And please prepare. This is all I'm saying is that because I just made that connection and I, as I said, I'll leave this uh, linked underneath and you can do more looking into it. Myself, I've got enough information for me to make enough connections to know that what we're going into is like something that we have not experienced yet within our lifetimes on this planet. So I'm pretty happy to say, well, that's just more confirmation to me that yes, we are definitely seeing big changes on our planet that are going to be lasting for quite a while and so we should be preparing for that okay and uh, let's just do a quick check of the uh, solar activity now it's uh, settled down a little bit after we've had some um, you know pretty big flares we can see that it's kind of settled down a bit oh we've had a little bit here and you know yeah pretty much here it's it's kind of settled right down so for now um, I think Horace is just allowing us to process that burst of energy and um, once we're done processing that, believe me, the onslaught is going to continue. So build those towers, guys, because that's pretty much uh, what is going on. Oh, and before I go, I really want you guys uh, that are interested in this uh, information about the Ice Age patterns in um, you know, ice core data. Um, even, and this is how they know um, around these times, is um, this guy here, uh, Robert Felix, is a researcher and he actually found these patterns and he was saying all the indicators are we are moving into an ice age. Uh, and he was saying it was a little ice age and it looks like we're back going to head back into it. 
And this is two years ago, so um, this is Red Ice Radio, and I have actually contacted Henrik and asked him if he can get Robert Felix back on the show, and he said, good idea, he is going to try and get him back on. So I will let you know uh, when that happens, and uh, or if any of you guys see the interview, please let me know as well. All right, guys, well, I'll leave it here, and as I said, I'll um, link everything underneath. So let's just keep um, paying attention and observing, and um, yeah, as always, peace out.